Hey everyone, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. Uh, I'm not in my basement, <laughs> you can tell. I'm actually filming this on location. I'm in Los Angeles, uh, Marina Del Rey, and we have a bright light for filming this for me uh, as a favor. His name is Jeff Adams and he reached out to me. He works at Facebook. He's been doing bright light eating for about 10 months. He's lost 95 pounds and um, because he works at Facebook, he was like, hey, I could be a contact for you at Facebook, you know, just you know, love to help the bright line eating movement in any way I can. And uh, so we've stayed in touch and now I'm here and he's here. So um, he's helping me out with this. So, you know, I travel a lot and you know that. And I thought that for this vlog, it might be fun to give you a little behind the scenes peek at how I handle my food when I travel. Um, of course, there's some variation, but you know, this is kind of how I'm in a little bit of a routine here. This is kind of how I'm handling my food when I travel. So I thought I would just show you around. So first of all, we are in the kitchen of the Airbnb that I rented. And you know, Airbnb is just a godsend for Brightline Eaters. It's so wonderful to just have your own kitchen. And you can always tell in the profiles when you look at the apartment, whether it's going to have a full kitchen or like kind of a quasi kitchen. I of course opt for the full kitchen. Um, I, I do find the truth is in hotel rooms too, you know, it, it's great if there's a fridge and a microwave. I don't even need them to be honest. Um, I can pack accordingly. I do need to know whether I'm going to have a fridge and a microwave, but if I don't, I can bring foods where I'm just not going to need it, but it is nice to have a kitchen. It really is. So, and the good thing about Airbnb is that it, it's pretty competitive with hotel prices. Like you, you pretty much save money usually by getting an Airbnb as compared with a hotel. So here's my Airbnb. I landed in Los Angeles, I don't know, four or five days ago. And the first thing I did was um, I went to Whole Foods <laughs> and I bought a bunch of stuff. I think I bought like, yeah, I bought a lot of food. Um, and I haven't had to go back since. It's been days and days and days and I got pretty much everything I needed Whole Foods. And I also um, packed a bunch of stuff. Okay, so just saying, I brought an extra suitcase that had video equipment in it, but mostly kitchen supplies in it because I didn't want to rebuy a can opener, a peeler. I wasn't sure whether the Airbnb would have them. So I just brought some stuff. And then I also brought, um, I think it's in here. I brought my salad bowl <laughs> in my suitcase because I, what well, my preferred dinner, it's just simple. I just like a big salad and I usually, so it's like 14 ounces of salad. I'll put six ounces of beans in it. Um, you know, I'll just get some beans and, um, and then a tablespoon of olive oil. And um, so I, I brought my salad bowl because um, it's just sort of a creature comfort, you know, like I like a nice wooden salad bowl and I thought they probably wouldn't have one at the Airbnb. So I don't always do that, of course, I don't, but you know, this is like a two week trip. So I brought an extra suitcase for my kitchen here. I also brought this little doohickey here. Um, this is a thing that I got at um, Bed Bath & Beyond. It's a cutting board, obviously, and you know, most Airbnbs will have a cutting board, but check this out. It's also a strainer and it's like, it's flat until you open it up. And so it fits really easily, like in the top of a suitcase, like it just, it just fits right there. Adds a little bit of weight, but not much. And then what's great is I can, I like to strain my beans. So I'll, I'll strain my beans. I'll usually prep two cans at a time and then I'll save the rest in a storage container. Now I actually brought some storage containers too. These little guys are by Joseph Joseph. Um, all one word, Joseph Joseph, J-O-S-E-P-H, my dad's name, awesome name. Um, and look, they're stacking nesting um, containers. They have them in plastic and they have them in glass. I brought the plastic ones because I'm traveling. I prefer glass at home. But they nest and stack them like Russian dolls. And so then I have like containers for leftovers. If I'm going to be on the road, um, I'll pack my salad in this big guy instead of bringing the wooden salad bowl, you know, if I'm going to be out and about. So um, these I put in my suitcase too. These I find really, really helpful. Um, okay. So I went to Whole Foods. This is as close to a cooking show as I've ever done. I'm, I'm so simple with my food that no one would ever hire me to do a cooking show because it would be boring. It'd be like, okay, so now we're making green beans. You steam the green beans. You weigh six ounces of them and you put them on a plate. <laughs> Salt and pepper are nice. End of show. Um, so anyway, this is as close to a cooking show as I've ever done. So let's start with breakfast. Um, so if I go over here to the fridge, um, 
I, I like yogurt at home. I, I make my own soy yogurt. I don't eat dairy. Um, it just doesn't do good things for my digestive system and I don't really believe in it. But I was at Whole Foods and I'm trying goat yogurt. This is goat yogurt. It's pretty good. Um, I don't think they have it at my Pittsburgh Wegmans, so it's, I'm trying hard not to fall in love with it because I don't think they have it locally to me. Um, but I'm testing it to see how my digestive system likes it. But so I'm trying Greek yogurt at home. I just do soy yogurt and I make it myself. Um, that's about as fancy as I get in the kitchen is home making my own yogurt. It's, it's actually easier than it sounds. It takes about 10 minutes every two weeks to make my yogurt. Anything fancier than that, I can't get behind. Um, I bought some, um, golden ground flaxseed meal and, um, my breakfast is going to start off every morning with oats. I'm a big fan of Bob's Red Mill. I'm a big fan of buying organic. Everything I get, I try to get organic. And um, these are gluten-free oats. I'm really trying to be gluten-free because um, my Hashimoto's, I think, needs it. Um, so all the way out an ounce. I've got my little travel scale here. This is the OXO travel scale. I bring two of them. <laughs> um, one in my suitcase for the kitchen and then one that's gonna that I keep in my purse at all times. And what I've realized is if I travel, it might make sense, well, just bring one. And if you're home, you're in your kitchen and you can get it from your purse. But what I've discovered is I take it out of my purse, I weigh my food and then I leave it on the counter and then I leave the house and then I don't have it with me. So I have two scales. I found that that's really best to have one with me at all times and one in the kitchen. So I'll start off, I'll measure, measure out my one ounce of oats. I add an ample amount of salt in it. Don't forget to add salt to your food if you're starting to do bright line eating. Um, it's very dangerous not to eat enough salt. Sodium and chloride are essential neurons for, essential ions for neuronal function, like your brain needs enough sodium and chloride. And when you stop eating processed food, you stop getting enough sodium and chloride in, um, in your food. So you need to add salt. So, oatmeal, yogurt, and then fruit. I've been having berries every morning, but I just ate my last little thing of berries. So luckily I bought some beautiful red pears. So starting tomorrow morning, I'll be eating up the red pears. They've been ripe ripening in the, the Whole Foods bag um, here on the counter for a few, a few days. So they're just starting to get ripe. And I also bought a bunch of apples, um, which I'll be having for lunch. Um, so that's pretty much my breakfast. An ounce of oats, um, the uh, the yogurt. I'll have six ounces of that and then half an ounce of ground flax seeds. That together makes a full protein. And, um, and then the fruit. Um, and then for lunch, I've got a couple ways I can go. I'm either having tofu or hummus. So back to the fridge here. Um, I bought a little, a little thing of tofu. I'll usually slice this up into like slabs and then put it in a frying pan with soy sauce. Like I'll, I'll douse the bottom of the pan in soy sauce. I'll lay the tofu slabs in it and then just cook it down until it's crispy. Add more soy sauce, flip it over, cook it until it's crispy, yum. Um, if you've never had tofu cooked that way, try it, it's so good. And then I also just got some hummus. Um, so I'll either have four ounces of tofu or four ounces of hummus. And then I have a ton of vegetables. Oh my gosh, I bought lots of vegetables. A lot of them are gone already, but, um, cause I had a bunch of radishes that I just ate up for my lunch now, but I've got red onion, I've got broccoli, I've got carrots, I've got red peppers, I had radishes. Sometimes I'll get cauliflower, um, sometimes I'll get cucumber, sometimes I'll get celery, whatever. I just get a lot of veggies. So, um, I also got, um, a lot of super greens, like washed lots of times. I'll saute that up and have that with my tofu maybe. Um, and an apple, or I'll go the like raw veggie hummus route. That's a, pretty much what I do for lunch. If I'm on the go, I'll have nuts. I got nuts over there on the counter um, for my protein. And then, and then the apple. This is the last little apple that I have in the fridge. I have to go to back to the grocery store. Um, and then dinner, you know, I just do a big salad. Like I've got the 50-50 organic greens that's 50% spring mix and 50% baby spinach. I love that. I eat a lot of that so I get a lot of my greens. And then I'll just add those veggies and um, I've got flax oil here. I bought some lemons so I can add lemons to my water and I also like to squeeze the juice of at least half a lemon, maybe, maybe even a whole lemon on top of a salad. Um, yeah, so that's that. Over here I've got, um, I've got the avocado, which I'll slice into my salad. Sometimes I'll call it a fat, sometimes I'll just call it a vegetable and just top up the rest of my salad with some avocado. 
Um, I got some some yummy tea, some traditional medicinals tea. I got some ginger, I got some peppermint in case I want a nice cup of something, you know, any time of day if I get cold, which I do easily or whatever. I'll have just a cup of tea. And then I'm, um, I'm a fan of this water. I just discovered this water. This isn't something I've ever had before, but I found it at Whole Foods. It's, it's water that's pH 10. I discovered recently in my doctor that my pH, it, well, it, it's gone up now, but it was four for a little bit. I was drinking a lot of decaf coffee and black, and I don't know what else, maybe stress or whatever, but like pH should be, your pH should be alkaline ideally in your body, a pH of like eight or nine or 10 or something. So um, I think also I drink a lot of sparkling water and I think sparkling water has a very acidic pH. So, you know, uh, neutral pH is seven, lower than that is, is too acidic higher than that is basic. So um, that's what you want. You want a basic alkaline pH. So drinking pH 10 water is a cool thing. So I just discovered that. Um, I also brought my own little, you know, if I'm gonna pack my lunch or my dinner or whatever, I've got a little travel bag. I always keep a thing of salt in it to, so I, again, you need to salt your food. If you're not eating processed food, you gotta add your own salt to your food. I love this uh, Herbamare herb salt. It's organic, it's really good. Um, it's natural sea salt with organic vegetables. It's got like celery, leek, cress, onion, chives, parsley, lovage, I don't even know what that is, lovage, garlic, basil, marjoram, rosemary, thyme, kelp. It's good stuff. So I'll keep that in there so I have it for my lunch or my dinner. That's kind of what I'm doing. So, um, you know, it feels pretty automatic. Like I just kind of, you know, I, it might seem like a lot, but you know, wherever I land, I just make sure that I get to a grocery store. Usually I'll rent a car, but sometimes I'll just Uber over to a grocery store. I'll buy the supplies that I need in, in a hotel room. I'll just make sure that I get stuff that doesn't, you know, that's pretty refrigeration neutral, like apples, for example, as, as, as compared with berries or, you know, like heads of broccoli, things of carrots, they last for days and days and days. Like they don't need to be refrigerated. So, um, Anyway, so I'll just do that if I'm in a hotel room or, you know, if I have an Airbnb and I have my own kitchen, that's what I do. Um, you know, I think if you heard like in late November, I had a, a several days where my bright lines were just not good and um, I surrendered and recommitted and I'm on day today, I think it's like, it's right around day 50. It might be on day 49 of squeaky clean bright lines since then. Um, and it just feels good to be in that groove and to be taking care of my food. Like Jeff and I are about to go hop in his convertible and drive all around the coast of LA. And, um, you know, we were texting and I was like, well, he's like, what, what are your constraints for the evening? And I was like, well, I don't really have any, but dinner, I like to eat early in general. And I'd rather not worry about a restaurant. Like, how about we pack our own meals? And he's like, what an awesome idea. I'll bring my own food. You bring yours. And so I'm about to whip together my you know, my salad in the Joseph Joseph container here. I'm gonna whip together my salad and then we're gonna hop in the convertible and go just just chill out a little bit and drive around. But um, when for me, when my food is in order, like when I take care of my food first, it relaxes me to just have such a great time in life, no matter what else I'm gonna do. In the olden days, the food was the focal point of the entertainment. It was the focal point of the activity. And what I've noticed is when my bright lines are really intact, I'm not looking for a hit in food. As a matter of fact, it's the opposite. I'm looking to protect my bright lines, make sure that my bright line meal is planned, accounted for, squared away, and then the people that I'm interacting with become the focal point of my day, rather than, ooh, what kind of restaurant are we gonna go to and how can I get a hit off the food there? Um, so it's just a really nice, gentle shift uh, when the meals are taken away out of the sort of entertainment equation um, and then and then it's all about the relationships it's all about the people so I'm having a great time here in LA for everyone who's in the Northwest where I just was and I don't know if it's by the time this video airs if it's still gonna be like two degrees <laughs> I just want to say I'm sorry it's been like 70 75 degrees and sunny here which is just really nice for January so I'm enjoying myself I'm heading to San Diego next and then home to Rochester and then Dave and I are moving with our kids oh my gosh we're moving our whole household, not super far away in the same area, but just to a house that has a home office, which uh, it's about time. Um, I, do you, I don't know if you remember the vlog where I shot in my office and I was stopping being a professor 
and I was, it was like another vlog that was like this. It was on location and I was sobbing about like giving up my lifetime in academia. Well, uh, we mo I moved that day and the movers took all my stuff and put it in storage because we didn't have any place to put it in our house. So my entire office, my entire academic career is still sitting in boxes a year and a half later in storage. And we're finally next month moving to a house where I can actually have an office. So that's good. I've been running the entire Bright Line Eating movement off a laptop in the kitchen table, <laughs> which is just a little silly. So anyway, that's just a little window into my life. That's how I do my food when I travel. Um, thanks so much for watching the, the weekly vlog. I love being here with you every week. Uh, it's fun to come to you on location and I'll see you next week.